manager Mr. Stroke to President Emerson Munangagwa's anger during the week after the former opposition leader woke up from a self-imposed sabbatical to demand that Sadak should deal with the allegedly stolen Zimbabwe election of 2023. Chamisa argued that since the Sajak through its observer mission declared the poor a fraud, it could not turn around and recognize Munangagwa as legitimate. We reiterate, as I do, that this point has been made to Sajak, the AU, and indeed the international community, that it is untied and untenable to sanitize and fertilize theft of elections and electoral malpractices by turning a deaf ear and casting a blind eye to matters of gigantic electoral fraud, such as we have seen in itself in a fraud to the Africa we want. Munangagwa was triggered to react through the information minister, Jenfan Muskwere, at a post-cabinet briefing. In a brief statement, government said the youthful leader who is currently partyless suffered from cognitive dissonance. Uh, one of the members of the fourth estate also wanted to seek clarity about uh, one uh, Mr. Nelson Chamisa who abandoned his political party. That in a summary, I believe and we believe he is suffering from cognitive uh, dissonance. The European Union ambassador, Jobs von Kickman, speaking on Free Talk on HSTV News interview, said the 2023 general elections failed to build trust owing to the irregularities highlighted by various observer missions. So first of all, after elections, the elections we had hoped would be an element which would contribute to trust building. They didn't contribute. I think we had different opinions on the elections and uh, you can defend each opinion, but at the end of the day, it was not something where we necessarily agreed and uh, where we were on the same line. So it didn't help for the trust building. But that has nothing to do with the funding for the Zimbabwean Electoral Commission. We stopped the funding with the Zimbabwean Electoral Commission because uh, several of the election observation reports pointed towards uh, a lack of independence and missed opportunities with the Zimbabwean Electoral Commission during the elections. So we didn't feel it's the right, uh, it's the right moment to put money into a, an institution which has been heavily criticized <coughs> during and after elections. But that doesn't mean we are not supporting inst independent institutions. On the contrary, we, we will do and we will continue doing it. Internal power struggles could be getting out of hand in Sano PF, with war veterans now slowly coming out to challenge President Emerson Munangagwa. Sano PF Central Committee member and former Sanyati legislator Blessed Geza, who many view as a front of Christopher Mutangwa and suffering Sano PF majority, demanded cabinet and Politburo be dissolved or all hell breaks loose. <laughs> Right? Now what you wenga? I need it. Right? Now what is all the policy bureau? Tikwane is what is it? Now what is all the cabinet? You know, the Nanaka Zemega Zembe, Vana Soda, Vanan, how much you tell the Vanuku for you? Vanakam Bamuda, Vanan, you know, why do you get your comrade? You know, could I my general? Could I my retired CIO, Waka Wanda? Could never. He retired commissioners of police and other senior officers of Gawanda. Aladiwe, when I'm with grade seven, I don't capacity and capability. Grade seven, you know, what a beast you're going to. Now, as I do, Minister of State, Magwana, Magwana, provincial minister, it's terrible. It's terrible. We are not apologetic about it. Children, children, it. To an out of being, and not out of the president, one for the motor, one for the children, I'm a bodyguard. Parliament has all but paralyzed the Jameson Timber led C after the National Assembly Speaker and Sanu PF Secretary of Treasury Jacob Mudenda removed all office bearers seconded by the now recalled Senator in Parliament. Immediately, Senge Sochabangu, the self imposed Interim Secretary General, then declared himself leader of the opposition in Parliament, tripling his President Welshman Nube and peers. The moves places Chabangu and Nube on crosshairs, but more importantly places the Interim Secretary General on the table to receive government funding while droning Timber and his allies. In the House on the appointment of several members of the Triple C party, 
to various portfolios in Parliament. The announcement was based on a letter authored by one Mr. Jameson Timber, purporting to be the interim leader of the Triple C party. On reflection, I should not have acted upon that letter, as facts now there before me show that Jameson Timber had no locus standi to represent the party in such manner as I will outline below. First, Jameson Timber was recalled from the Senate by the Triple Party on 7th November 2023. The party which he purported to represent as the acting leader and administrator. Second, Jameson Timber challenged the recall in the High Court under case number HCH 6684-23, stroke with other former members of the Triple C party and lost the, the court case. He was also among the former members of the Triple C party whom the High Court barred on 9th December 2023 from contesting the, three, the 3rd February 2024 by elections under the Triple C party following Sengezo Chabang's application to block them from participation participating in the polls under the Triple C banner. Considering that James, Jameson Timber had been recalled by the same Triple Party he was purporting to represent and that he was also banned by the court from contesting under the banner of the same triple, triple C party, his communication to Parliament and the appointments made thereafter are therefore null and void. Accordingly, I am rescinding the announcement made on the 15th February 2024, and referring the matter back to the Triple C party to make the appropriate appointments. In response, Jameson Timber accused Mudenda of turning parliament into a ZANU PF enclave while calling his erstwhile colleague Chabangu a puppet of the ruling party. By way of um, background and context, I want to say that the Zimbabwean parliament is now a circus. And the chief muppet in this circus is Sengezo Shabao, who is being cheered and aided by the so called MDC 2019 structure led by Professor Walshman Ngube and others. The puppet master is Zanupia. After more than two weeks in the remand prison, Nefer Muchango finally tested freedom following his release on a 1,000 US dollar bail. Muchangwa, son of ZANU PF spokesperson and war veterans leader Christopher Muchangwa, who is now facing charges of illegally dealing in foreign currency, struggled to get bail in what many now consider a politically motivated arrest. Early in the week, High Court Judge Justice Esther Muremba recused herself from matter, citing personal reasons. 
The long fight for freedom paid dividend for Nevi Muchangwa, Elise Majichani, and Simbarashe Tichingana Friday morning when High Court Judge Justice Rogers Manyangaze finally set them free when he granted them a 1,000 United States dollar bail. As part of the bail conditions, Muchangwa and core accused persons will have to report to the police twice a week on Monday and Friday between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. and were ordered not to interfere with witnesses in the matter. Um, firstly, was the, each of the appellants was ordered to pay 1,000 US dollars or equivalents in ZIG to report twice a week on a Monday and a Friday. Uh, between 6 a.m. and at nearest police stations, not to interfere with witnesses and to surrender their travel documents. Josephine Sande told journalists the bell ruling came as a relief ending what was almost a month long agonizing battle for the son of one of ZANU PF's heavyweights, Christopher Machangwa. At least, at last, I'm, I'm relieved now. It has been uh, a, a, almost a month of, to, of uh, running around and uh, uh, having stress, not sleeping, trying to, to put things in order. But uh, today, fortunately, we, we are happy. Muchango was arrested on the 8th of May, facing allegations of dealing in foreign currency and money laundering, but was denied bail at the magistrate's courts, leaving him with no option but to approach the High Court, which took its sweet time. Reporting for HSTV News and Current Affairs, Sandra Mandichari. The United Methodist Church was on fire this week as they were divided on their leader's decision to allow same-sex marriages in the church. Demonstrations rocked the church. In Zimbabwe, the issue around gays and lesbians remained an emotive and divisive issue both culturally and religiously. LGBTQ, the best support we will give is that we can congregate with you with no problem. Lenmo Jonasi, a Zimbabwe stand-up comedian, performing on America's Got Talent, divided opinion among fellow countrymen, with, with one side applauding him for getting a golden buzzer, while another felt he went too far denigrating his country on an international stage. However, a video captured by Feed ZW at a rally last year showed Jonasi's joke was not far off from reality. Away from everything, like where, where, where the simplest of things, you know, ignites our excitement. Like they recently installed a traffic light in my village. Everybody was so excited about this traffic light. We we're all taking photos with it. Oh my God! <laughs> this was the news in brief on your favorite news channel, HSTV News. I am your host, Wongai Kawa. Until next week. Good night.